Hi, I'm Ian and I'm the Lonely Chef. And we have a fabulously funny show for you in the next half an hour. At the end of the show, there's a number and I want you to jot it down and, and call me because, well, I'm single and I'm looking for a date and possibly a relationship and who knows, maybe even marriage. I'm looking to meet somebody special. I'm fabulously wealthy. I want to settle down and I want to share this wealth with that special person and just live happily ever after. So enjoy the show and hopefully we'll meet. Until we do, goodbye. Oh, uh, one more thing. <laughs> I do happen to lie an awful lot. <laughs> Lonely, I've been searching for so long. Lonely, only hoping you're the one who will change my life and make these dreams come true. I'm not one to toot my own horn, of course, but um, this young lady that I have coming as a date today is somebody really special. I, I feel that love has finally struck my heart. And uh, I met this, <laughs> I know, it's wonderful, isn't it, when something like this, like Cupid's little arrow, just pierces my little loving heart. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I met this young lady outside of a department store in uh, Pennsylvania. I was uh, sitting on this little rocking horse and uh, I just put in about $5 <laughs> worth of quarters. And <clears throat> now I don't know if you know this or not, but when I was about three years old, I was actually put into the Guinness Book of World Records for, <laughs> yes, for right. being able to rock 432 times every minute on one of these little spring horses. <laughs> Now, when I was 16, I was up to almost 500, and again, I was in the Guinness Book of Records. And <clears throat> this, uh, this lady was so impressed with my writing abilities that she, <laughs> she, she gave me uh, $5 in quarters again, and we started chatting and stuff. And uh, I told her that I was into show jumping, and uh, she mentioned that she was also a show jumper, and so she's going to be on the show. And uh, I think one of the things that she really liked about me was that I was very honest with her because <laughs> when, I was, <laughs> when I was about 30 years old, I, I realized that Clydesdales were not good show jumpers. And <clears throat> so anyway, I uh, sold off the Clydesdales and I became involved with Buckingham Palace, which I'll tell you all about the Queen's horses and so on. So we'll, <laughs> we'll see you in just a few minutes with a wonderful meal and a wonderful lady. Be back in just a second. <laughs> I was just reliving that moment where I won the, uh, uh, I think it's called the National something or other. Anyway, it was a big, long, <laughs> well, anyway, I just went absolutely blank there for a minute, but I know that I didn't have a horse. I was actually doing this on my own two legs. <laughs> so uh, anyway, we have this delicious meal, which you must try. It's very, very simple to prepare. It's beef teriyaki English style. So. <laughs> What we're going to do, we've got some nice beef here, and um, 
We're just going to uh, put this into some strips. Now the young lady that's coming through the door is a young lady called Linda. And uh, she has been show jumping professionally, I understand, since she was a child. And um, the horse that she was riding as a child is now stuffed. Uh, it sort of <laughs> passed on and uh, she liked this horse and uh, she had it stuffed and it's mounted uh, in her living room. So, uh, now I haven't met this, uh, I haven't been to this young lady's place, but she assures me that I'm invited over there sometime and uh, I, uh, <laughs> this is great. <laughs> There was just a naughty thought that passed through my mind. I want it. <laughs> I just won't get into that. But anyway, <laughs> this uh, particular dish here is uh, very inexpensive to prepare. And it's also something that we do in real time here. Now, <laughs> you do know that I sort of mess around an awful lot here as um, uh, the lonely chef. But uh, there are books that uh, show these recipes in good detail. And there's a number at the back end of the show. And uh, do call it and pick up uh, the books because they are very, very good. And uh, also, we'd love to have you on the show. And there's a way that uh, you can be involved with the show as my special guest. And uh, so it's lots of fun. But anyway, we've got uh, some hot oil going here. And what we're going to do is just uh, throw this into the pan. Let me just take this one off here. Get this going. Ooh, ho, ho, ho. There's something about sizzle. It just makes me want to go jump fences or something. It's just incredible. <laughs> Let me get a little spatula. And... All right. That's just sizzling away nicely. Right, now, one of the tricks to this, and uh, this is rosemary, fresh rosemary out of my rosemary gardens in Washington State. Now, I... <laughs> it's true. Um, I have over 30,000 acres <laughs> just planted in rosemary. And uh, so we'll just cut up a little of this. I have actually one of the largest uh, spice gardens in the world. It is now officially recognized as the ninth wonder of the world. Uh, the eighth wonder is myself. <laughs> All right. We put a little rosemary in. Oh, that absolutely just makes my spine tingle. <laughs> so excited. All right, we put in a little uh, pepper. So we uh, slice some of this, get rid of the insides here very quickly. And we'll just cut up some nice uh, yellow peppers, cut those like so. And we'll put that in there. Oh, looks good already. Now we'll just add a little more color. One of the interesting things though with this thing is the sauce that we prepare for this uh, little piece. And it's one of the secrets that I learned from British intelligence. Uh, <laughs> when I was on assignment uh, for the Queen of England and Prince Philip, they were actually asking me to look for a bride for Prince Charles. Well, you know what happened. <laughs> I, because I'm a true Englishman, I did offer myself uh, to the to Charles. Uh, <laughs> um, but there was a problem with something or other. I really can't figure out what it was. But anyway, we'll, uh, I think it was something to do with royal etiquette or something like that. But uh, anyway, it was uh, strongly under consideration. I, I, I was on a short list. <laughs> Uh, all right. Now, the sauce that we're going to do for this is very interesting because I'm just going to move this over here. And I think you can see that from the, the camera above. We've got some hot oil in there. What we're actually going to do is throw a little sugar in here, like so. Just stir that around. Let that caramelize. This is going to be absolutely wonderful. And then we take this particular little brand of uh, Worcestershire sauce. I never showed you that. And then we also take some soy sauce. 
I don't know if I'm supposed to show brands or anything like that. But anyway, now this is a trick that I learned in British intelligence. And what you do is, <laughs> it's absolutely true. <laughs> and you put in about this much. Oh, that'll make you jump. All right. Now, we have this little beastie here, which is a, a Japanese eggplant. And we're just going to uh, put a few chunks in here. This is uh, something that, I don't know, you should experiment with food because uh, when I used to cook for the queen, um, she used to say, she used to say, Ian, give me something different. And uh, more often than not, I did. And I was actually with the palace for about uh, four years as, uh, as head chef. Now, that's, that's not unusual, but I was only four years old at the time. Um, so we just, uh, <laughs> I was cooking up food for the young ones, you know, for the royals. And they wanted somebody that identified with them, and uh, of course they're very horsey. So I'm horsey too, I mean I've always been involved with riding outside of malls. And um, uh, so I just uh, fit right in. Anyway, this is the sauce here. Oh, that's wonderful. Now that is going to be poured over uh, the steak. And uh, we'll be back in just a second. And we'll put all this together and make a wonderful meal for this young lady. So stay tuned and we'll be right back. Yes. Moving along here, and uh, I'm really getting in the mood for some uh, some good uh, high uh, high steeple chasing or whatever. Um, she's going to be here in just a couple of seconds. But first, what we want to do is to strain the juice from this beef. Uh, doesn't that look wonderful? So we'll just move that over to the sink, and here we go. Whoa! Just strain the juice and throw it back in the pot. There. Now. Uh, we'll put that onto another burner, and what we're going to do is make a nice bed of green bean sprouts. So we'll get some bean sprouts, and we'll just throw these in here. Oh. Now, a little trick for uh, just uh, cooking up these bean sprouts, I put a little hot oil in there. And what we're going to do is just get a, a touch of water. And we'll just uh, put a little water in there. Oh, look at that. Oh, sizzle, 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 sizzle. Find a nice little lid there. And that just cooks them all the way through. All right, well, I guess uh, we should uh, probably look at this last little piece of information here before I go and um, get into some show jumping. <laughs> this particular eggplant I grow in the Himalayas. I have another th wow. It's absolutely, well, what can I say? Anyway. But it's purple, and everybody else in the world has purple eggplants. Uh, because I was with British Intelligence, the, uh, wow. we, we have enabled this particular plant to be grown in every color under the sun. In fact, <laughs> we do call it the Roigbiv eggplant, which is red, orange, yellow, green, indigo, blue, violet. Oh, there goes my little bell. Well, I should. Tell you how, I shall get my horse. Shh. Trigger, where are you? Okay, Trigger. Let's go, my little trusty steed. Here we go. Hello, how are you? Nice oh. to see you again. Yes, my, my horse. Oh, I see that. Yes, You're I just thought I would impress you with uh, oh, very why, don't, why don't we just uh nice to see oh, you kissy, again. kissy, oh. kissy. Oh. Oh. oh, oh. Nice to 
see you. Well, that's the most romance I've had in about eight years. Uh, why, why don't you come on through? And, oh, sure. Uh, well, we'll cook up this wonderful oh, it meal. Oh, it's just heavenly. I have to stay on top of it here um, because uh, it might burn. So I'm just going to put my cap down in my we'll whip. We'll put trigger hand. in the stable. I'll keep this handy just in case. I brought us some wine, Ian. So oh, wonderful. Maybe for a little later. You could reminisce about some of those championship days of yours. <laughs> well, yes, of course. I'll just uh, set it over here. Uh, tell me, you've been doing show jumping for quite a while, right? It's 20 years. 20 years? Yes. Wow. What's the highest fence that you ever jumped over? Uh, it was actually a, a, an eggplant hedge up in the Himalayas. <laughs> I, I believe it's, it was near your property. You, you grow quite a crop up there, That's so right, I yes. Hear. Well, that would have probably been the Himalayan Grand National steeplechase. I, I, yes, that's exactly yes. what it was, yes. I am the proud sponsor of that race. Yes. And uh, former champion, yes, yes. 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 I, I do put up over $5 million worth of uh, prize money for that particular race. Oh. How, how did you do in there? Uh, uh, very well. I, I missed the second eggplant fence, so I had a little problem. I was only second place. Uh, that would and there have was been... no prize money for that. I guess you weren't sponsoring that. <laughs> Well, well, I guess not. <laughs> Must have been some other person. Anyway, uh, we have a terrific meal here. Yes, it looks um, wonderful. What I'm going to do is just pull this one over here. Those bean sprouts are doing just absolutely mm -hmm. wonderful. And now I'm going to pour this sauce over here. And just watch this as it's poured over. We put this into here. Mm. Oh, can you smell that now? Yes, just mm, delicious. Um, now, that's a wonderful smell, which reminds me of the Lonely Chef perfumery line. <coughs> oh, yes. yes. I've been waiting for that. What, well, we, it, what we, is the fragrance? It's called Ode de la Mer. La Mer? Yes, oh. Ode de la Mer. In memory of that old mare that you had, yes, that nag right. from years ago. Yeah. Well, I was sort of given the idea by Roy and Dale, you know, the... Oh, yes, uh, yes. Yes, and, um, you know, also because my horse, which was uh, also named Trigger, um, was, <laughs> was perhaps, and uh, I think this is generally recognized in the horse set, was perhaps one of the greatest hairy, unwashed athletes in the world. Oh, I thought that was yourself. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought that title was for you, not for your horse. I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. I, I... Well, I, I do have the same masculine qualities as a horse. Yes, yes, I, I've noticed. <laughs> yes, so I see. <laughs> Well, I think we're going to have a blast here tonight. Yeah, so. I'm really hungry. After a good brisk ride, I'd like to have a good, some good beef. And uh, me too. Perhaps you could <laughs> later. You could show me a little bit of your some of your equestrian skills. Ah, I haven't well, seen you ride for quite a while. Well, and I yes. See you're uh, ready to go here. So, <laughs> well, I mean, while this is brewing, we could uh, do a little course. What do you say? Well, absolutely. Uh, what do you think? Um, I thought maybe you could just show me your form over the fences. See if you've firmed up your seat at all. <laughs> <laughs> That was one of your problems, if you recall, rather flabby seat. You worked on that? <laughs> so, what do you say? <laughs> well, look, I see we've got a couple of mounts here. Yes, uh, well, we should... Um, Mount up, as we say. Yes. As you say. <laughs> as we say. Let me just uh, <laughs> make sure everything's okay. Oh, I don't have a bridle on mine. Well, I'll just have to go... Uh, okay, just bareback. Yes, one of my favorite ways to go, yes. Right, All right, okay. so here we are. Over around here, I thought. Oh, oh, I sit up straight now. Firm that bottom. Okay. Thought we'd set up a little a training fence here for you. And we just sort of jump from the coffee table over towards the kitchen. Now you go first, and I just want to take a look at your take a look at your form. <laughs> Seems a bit slow, we but let's wake him up a bit. Whoa! <laughs> You fell look what, off. Look what I get stuck with, the old nag. <laughs> oh, well. Come on Better in. I, I time. have to just finish this off. That's absolutely terrific. I can, we can see why you're the champion. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, once, in the, once in the saddle with me. My, yeah. <laughs> my, my, my horses are never quite the same. You know, I have a lot to learn from you. That's championship. Well, I'll tell you what, let's just uh, make this up onto a nice platter and we'll be right back in oh, just a great. couple of seconds with a beautiful, fabulous meal. Hey, that was terrific.
That's terrific. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, let me just put my little trigger down here. All right, now let's just... Uh, <laughs> I'd like to just recap this meal because yes. it is wonderful. And uh, I can just lift this up here and you really must try this because uh, it's a very simple thing to do. It's done in the time that um, we showed here today. And it's uh, beef strips in the soy sauce and it's uh, teriyaki beef, uh, English style. Uh, you put a little rosemary in there. It's absolutely terrific. It's very easy to do. You put down a bed of bean sprouts and then decorate it with the lemon uh, slices and uh, just touches of red pepper for some color. It's absolutely delicious. And uh, we'll dig into that, but uh, why don't you tell me about uh, show jumping and bits and pieces that you've done? Well, you know yourself being the former champion and all the championships that you've held and many that you've told me about anyway. Um, so my accomplishments would seem so small in comparison to yours, I'm sure. Probably. But, oh, <laughs> well. Let me pour you a little oh, wine that would while be we're lovely. talking here. Oh, this is so romantic. I'm glad you dropped by. Um, you know, when I'm on the range, uh, I do like to look... I, I do like to look after my horse because... Um, well, I always, I always carry carbonated water for my horse, oh. <coughs> and uh, I also take a bag of special oats yes. because you never know when you need them. And uh, you know, say. horses have to be fed and uh, watered and looked after, and it's really kind of an interesting thing to uh, to do. You know, I just as before we start, I just wanted to give one pointer to you yes. on um, you know how important it is with riding to have very gentle hands, a gentle yes. but firm touch. And I noticed over the hassock, you were a little a little rough on the mouth. So if I could just perhaps show you what I mean, just open your mouth up a bit there. Yeah, now this this gives you an idea. This would be a little hard, I would say. Oh. So you want to have a little gentler touch. So just a little tip, you know, for your yeah. keep in mind. Well, it's Did very you interesting. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, um, I just share that with you. Well, thank you very much. Yes. I mean, uh, I think we're going to have. We can a very always learn from each other. That's what I, mean. <laughs> I think we're going to have a very interesting time. And what I want to try and do is get you to do something else that I think um, we will. Really for a copy of the Lonely Chef Cookbook uh, or a videotape of how you can be my guest on the show, or to join. Our Chef's Club, where you could meet someone special on one of our romantic getaway parties, call 1 800 665 Chef and have your credit card ready. If you would like to write to me personally, please send your letter to P.O. Box 740, Everson, Washington 98247.